Welcome to Doc's Office Hours. It's the 2nd of December, 2021, and delighted to talk to documentation. Remember, we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. So today's agenda, modernizing a plug-in blog post. Diraj and I are working together on it. And if time allows, and if it's not too much, uh, we may review Gavin Mogan's election results blog post. It needs to, it's scheduled to post tomorrow. So we've got time to do the review. And if I need to review it myself solo, we, I can. I think this modernizing a plugin blog post is the, is the big topic. Definitely. And from my side as well, can you also talk about the copyright editing topic? I wanted to know. Oh, yes. What are triage the team. And yes. Yes, yes. Well, in fact, let's put that one first, Diraj, because hmm. that one, I think we, we, we owe that one first and good, very good. Okay, any other topics that you'd like to be sure we include on the agenda? Um, nothing as of now, but uh, maybe if time allows, we can talk about LTS guide as well. I had a few questions about that as well. Okay, let's like how put that it. change log and upgrade guide. Yes, good. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. All right, so triage team and copy editor process. So um, let's look first to see what the context is here. So github.com slash Jenkins dash infra. Ah too many characters in the URL. So if we go here, across the top is Teams. And now if we search for triage, here's the Jenkins.io triage team. And so what we see is we see five members, me, Oleg, Meg, Kristen, and Diraj. And then how many repositories it controls one repository and it allows triage permission so you can read clone and manage issues and pull requests so now i wonder if that means that you can merge them we may want to test that so i didn't think it gave you merge permission but yeah, okay, I think it does not. In this case, when they say mm -hmm. manage pull requests, I think it means that mm -hmm. you may be allowed to do things like close them, mm -hmm. but you can't merge them because I think that requires write. Mm -hmm. So like could, could you open them? Edit them? Okay, okay. You, you say you can mm -hmm. close them and edit them? Or was that, no, was I, that a I'm question? suggesting you. That was a question, yes. Okay, so well, so let's go let's go do an exploration to, to check that. Okay. Could you bring up your web browser and I'm gonna bring up I've got mine up and let's look at some pull mm -hmm. requests and we're going to see what actions are available to you. Okay. So for instance, take the very first one, 2021 election results. And it's marked as a draft. And I assume that you cannot mark it as not a draft. Does your screen have the ready for review button on it? Oh, sure. Can you share the link with me, please? Oh, oh, I sure can. Yes, you bet. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry. Thanks of course. Enough. Let's try this. So chat window is the PR. Okay, so in the, the Zoom chat, you'll find the pull request. Yes. So you're suggesting me to do? So open that pull request. You mm -hmm. should see a, a you may see a request for review across the top. I'm not sure if triage team members are automatically flagged as reviewers or not. Uh, no, I did not see this. Okay, um, but you do I see the draft identifier, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. 
And then if you scroll down to the bottom, do you have the option with this ready for review button to say, I'm going to pull it out of draft? I assume you do not. Yes, I do not have it. Okay, all right. Now, if we do, let's do something different. I think mm -hmm. if you, if we have you open the issues page and I'll paste this link as well. Mm -hmm. Let's have you go there and see if you have the button to close this issue, because I think you do have that, that option. Yes, close issue button right next to comment. Okay, so and, and that was, I suspect, a capability you didn't have before. So you have, you, you've mm -hmm. always had the ability to comment, but now you can also close an issue. This is not one we should close, but just knowing that you've got it, that's a permission that I believe you're granted by being part of the triage team. Right, okay. That's great. Now, back to the election results, I assume that you don't have anything. Oh, no, let's find one that's that's been approved. Um, where's an approved pull request? Ah, here's a good one. OK, so could you open this one? I'm going to post the link to this one. I want to see if you have permission to merge a pull request once it's been approved. Okay. Let me... So this is open. And if I scroll down, I see that there's an option for close pull request. But you don't have the green button that is merge pull request. No, I do not have that. Okay, right. So, and that's consistent. You get that when you become a copy editor. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll so you're we'll have you remain as a as a triage team member for mm -hmm. two or four weeks at least. Uh, then then after a period of this like this mentoring, then we'll mm -hmm. submit the request to the Jenkins developer list asking that you be granted permission to be a copy editor. And considering mm -hmm. how few copy editors there are, we really need you. Awesome. That sounds great. Okay. So Did you this, have? Uh, yes. So this uh, triage, tri triage time is where I'll be learning things. And after I have learned things, then I'll be getting the rights for copyright editing team, right? So for copy editor. Yes, that's correct. Copy editor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. So they have uh, more privileges, like uh, they can merge pull requests as well. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly. So copy editors, mm -hmm. copy editors. And if we look at that group, we'll see that there are only four of us. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like I can merge any peer that comes to Jenkins. When Well, you'll be able to merge as a copy editor. You can merge a P, any PR that mm -hmm. is, I think as a copy editor, it will require that it has to have been approved. But you can do the approval if it's not your PR. You could do the approval mm -hmm. and then you can merge it. Okay. That's I'm, scary. I'm <laughs> not, well, yeah, that's, that's why we want some training time for you so mm -hmm. that you don't. Now, thankfully, it's just Git and therefore we can always revert your commit. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to revert a mistake. So we're not, we're not frightened of people's mistakes. Mistakes happen, we fix them. But yes. I, I okay. don't know that it will give you this permission. So let me show you, show you this one where, for instance, this is a draft item. And I don't, I'm not sure if copy editor will let you uncheck the ready for review. So I'm not sure it will allow that. And even if, if it does allow that, I don't know that it would allow you the permission to do what this one will allow me. Oh, no, this is still another one in draft. Let's pick one that's not draft, like this one. OK, here I could preemptively check this checkbox, use your administrator privileges to merge it without, without satisfying requirements. And then I could just do the merge. But I don't think that will be yours because I don't think you're an administrator when you're a copy editor. Hmm. Right. Okay. So, so you can do plenty of damage, but 
not not catastrophic kinds of damage, whereas an administrator can do terrible catastrophic damage. Yes, that's true. Okay. Got it. Any any other questions on triage team? Um, no, nothing as of now. Okay. All right. Well, thank you and welcome to the team. Thanks for accepting the invitation. Thanks a lot. Okay, so reviewed the process and the permissions. All right, LTS change log. What questions did you have there? Mm, the questions were like, uh, how, so if I had to do or contribute to this, um, what should I be doing? And, uh, and what did you do this time? So just I want to understand the contributing part of this so that I can contribute better. Great, okay. Like you yes, explained sir. to me previously as well on IRC, but uh, there were so many numbers and <laughs> that confused me. <laughs> well, and, and I, think, I think it's good for us to record this. So this is a perfect excuse for us to do a recording like this and say, here are the steps that are commonly taken. So how is the change log assembled? How is content chosen? Um, how is the upgrade guide, how are the upgrade Topics upgrade that grade topics selected. Right. So and I think those are all very good things. So exactly. so so let's let's start with each of those and go through sort of a tour of them. Hmm. So the okay. change log is is two parts. And there's the, there's the back ports part, which is changes since the base, the weekly baseline. For example, that means we released 2.319 weekly, had some bugs. We didn't want to ship those bugs. Bugs in 2.319.1. A backport was proposed and accepted and merged. The change log documents those backports in the changes since 2.319 section. So now let's let's look at that to be sure that that it's that it's clear. So okay, so let's go here to the download page. And if we look at this one, changes since 2.319. So this is the first section. And these are all the backports. And almost always every backport is included in this list because it's quite rare that we would include a backport that is not worth mentioning to a user. If it's not worth mentioning to a user, it's usually not worth backporting. Okay. So and this, uh, if I, go ahead. Yes, so if I may, can you ask, tell me about uh, the term backport again and the sure. baseline, so these terms. Yes, yes, absolutely, very good. So. So a, the baseline, the baseline of 2.319.1 is the weekly release on which it was based. So it's 2.319. That's what I mean when I say so, baseline. So that, that is the same weekly change log that we do each Tuesday, right? Exactly the same, yes, that's correct. Oh, so, okay. so the 2.319 mm -hmm. baseline is, has, just changes between 2.318 and 2.319. That that's mm. the but but it but that release happens to also include everything up to that point. So changes in 304, 305, 306 are all in that weekly release cumulatively. Okay, that makes sense. So so we we start with a weekly 2.319. That weekly 
has some problems. We found those problems over the course of testing the weekly, and these backports are proposed copies of the cherry picks, actually, of the fixes for those issues we found brought back from later weekly versions. For example, <clears throat> this one was fixed in 2.322, and the fix was brought backwards to the 2.319 base so that it could be included in 2.319.1. Okay, so we brought back something from the future weekly change log to this uh, LTS guide. Exactly right. Back. Yes, that's right. We cherry pick okay. something backwards. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Uh, to include it in this one. Okay. So uh, how far can you go in future to pick something and bring it to this one? We, we could go all the way to any weekly release that had happened mm -hmm. after 2.319 before the release of this LTS. Okay. Oh, the release of this LTS, okay. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> got it. Here, let's, let's walk through a scenario because it, it's, a, it's a good one to, to walk through it. So. 2.319 has a bug. The bug is it's missing a hyperlink. The build history used to have a hyperlink in the in 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 its in the list. The hyperlink is not there anymore. Um, it was that bug was introduced at some earlier version, wherever it was, but it's missing in that release. We don't want to ship that to a user. 2.322 fixes that bug. Hmm, okay. The hyperlink is now is now in is is now in the build history page. Okay. However, if we don't do something, 2.319.1 will include this bug. Because 2.319.1 oh, okay. is just 2.319. Right. Yes, yes. Hmm. So if we don't cherry pick the fix back hmm. to stable dash two dot three nineteen, the bug will hmm. will be in will be in two dot three nineteen dot one. Yes. So I was wondering why are we picking something from 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 future weekly releases? Now I know because. The current three two point three nine one is not something that, that we want to show to use because it it is just a statement saying that we have this bug, and we actually want to show them a fix of that bug and which is in the future one, right? That's right. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That that's great. Yeah. So so we we made a mistake in two three hundred nineteen the weekly, we fixed it later. And it, it is a, an important enough fix that we want to make sure that the LTS based on that does not have that bug. So we backboard it. Right. Hmm. So the LTS, uh, like the main LTS uh, 2.319.1 that we are building out of this weekly 2.319 it will have all the entries of uh, all the valid entries of uh, 2.319 and some uh, fixes of, of those from the future weekly releases or is it what it's going to have or going to yes you said it exactly that was precisely correct what you described is mm -hmm. exactly what happens and the process mm -hmm. of choosing those things which things mm -hmm. shall we, which things are so serious we need to backport them? There's a process that we follow to make those, that choice. Okay, and before that, uh, so if we are basing uh, all the entries of uh, two point three one nine point one on this one weekly change log, uh, I see in the output of this uh, uh, 
monthly LTS change log that there are there's a lots of entries. So I'm wondering how all these entries are getting generated out of just one weekly uh, change log and few of its uh, future fixes entries. Okay, so does so that make sense? I, I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. So let's go let's go look at this together. So I think you were asking. Hmm. How does this list get assembled? Is that what you're asking? The notable changes since the previous LTS, or did I misunderstand your question? Yeah, my question was just exactly this. Like uh, we are just uh, basing our. Can you scroll up a little bit? Yes. Yes. So, uh, what is it? Do you call this two point three one nine dot one? What? Is what? It, uh, what do you call this uh, 2.319.1? So it's an LTS release? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yes. Sorry, I forgot the. Okay. Term. Yeah. So, so, so the question was, uh, yeah. Sorry. So the question was, uh, how is this file so big, the LTS uh, release file? Because we are basing it only on a weekly change log file, which is comparatively very small, right? Well, good. So you you asked exactly the right question. So the the earlier discussion talked about how we assemble this piece. Hmm. These are backboards. Hmm. Now your right. next, you've immediately taken us to the next question: is how do we assemble this piece? And hmm. and what what is it that chooses things to go there? Because notice hmm. the word here is notable. So this this is telling me. A human being reviewed all the changes and decided which ones were important enough to be notable. And so, mm -hmm. so this though is since 2.303.3. So 2.303.3 does not have any changes from 2.304, 2.305, 2.306, 307, all the way up to 318 and beyond. So, so this section is saying a human being thought about all the changes and decided which ones to show you as having changed since 2.303.3. Okay. So the okay. So, uh, we have collected, first of all, we uh, reviewed all the weekly change logs right from 2.303 till 2.318. And after reading all of them, we have decided like which one would we want to pick from them and uh, present it in 2.319.1, right? Correct. That's exactly right. You said it just perfectly. Mm. And uh, the reason we are uh, showing them because all the weekly change logs from 2.303 till 2.318 were not shown in the previous LTS month. It is release. Yes, exactly. The what's new in 2.303.3 doesn't know anything about what's in 304, 305, 306. All it knows about is what was actually applied to 303.3. And so this does not include excuse me, all of the new things added in 304, 305, 306, etc. So it has to be mentioned here if it's notable. It mean, it's mentioned in notable changes. Hmm. But uh, it, mm, but there are some things. Some things might be missing from uh, two point three zero three till two point three one eight because some of them might be a fix for uh, two point three zero three. If I'm not wrong, the previous uh, weekly uh, weekly change log on which the previous release was was based at. Or did that did I confuse you? <laughs> could could be well. So so the changes will be changes made in two point three hundred four and later on weekly. Mm -hmm. Those are the candidates for possible inclusion in this list, and mm -hmm. then we review mm -hmm. the candidates and decide which ones are should actually be included, not just our candidates. Mm -hmm. Right. So some of the uh, among all these select uh, while you're doing the selection, some of the entry would be those which were part of the back ports for the previous monthly uh, LTS release, right? Okay, say say that again. So 
so the back ports definitely are included, but the back ports would not naturally be visible here because they are back ports of something released after 2.319. And this is only 2.303 up until 2.319. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Got it. I was confused previously. Uh, yeah, so yes, I, I wonder maybe it would, yeah, I may, I may want to consider diagramming because what, what this really reminds me is that we've got, yeah, let's see if I've got, hang on. We've got to try this. I'm Remote is much more difficult than being being with you and me sitting around a whiteboard together. If <laughs> if I took this and said, okay, here we've got 2.303.3. Oops, three. Hmm. And here we've got two dot three oh four as the first and then a number of dots two dot three oh five okay and then all the way down to two dot three nineteen and so so the thing that goes into we then branch and create a branch here called 2.3, it's called stable-2.319. And from it, we'll release 2.319.1. And what that includes is these changes plus Let's see, plus what? Three night weekly is there. Oh, oh, right. And then this is this was what I was trying to illustrate. Then 2.320, 2.321. And here we've got some sort of a Dash line that brings some back. things back. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Diraj. So these might be the backports that you were talking about. Yes, exactly. You understood yes. it. Sorry, my diagramming is very poor. But yes. No, it's extremely useful. Yes. And so this black line is represented by the or the con the, the change log description of the things in the black line is described, oops, is described seriously. Here in notable changes since 2.303.3. And it's described there because those are the changes that happened on this line of development on the right-hand side. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Can you also do the same diagramming for the previous one, like a little bit? Sure. Yeah. Like, so, so for this, better. you mean for this section? No, uh, for the, can you go back to the diagram? Okay. Yeah. Uh, for 2.303.3. Ah, yes. So where does, where did it get its changes from? Yes. Good, very so good. So I can see a pattern between two uh, months. Right, and right, years. very good. Okay, so 2.303 received its changes from, from, actually, let's look because this will give us a hint. Security fixes were necessary there, agent, and this fix. And that mm -hmm. fix was first implemented in Jenkins 2.313. So, so, Weekly. right, exactly. So back mm -hmm. to our diagram. Here there was a mm -hmm. version 2.313. We're going to put one right in here. 2.313. Mm -hmm. And one of the changes, just one, but one of the changes from that 
was backported all the way to there. Hmm. Right. And uh, so it, it was a fix to an issue, right? It was. Yes. So that issue first came on which weekly release? That issue first came, in this case, on a weekly release probably 10 years ago. Oh. It's that old of a bug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this okay. particular bug is that old that it happened. And if we were to read the description here, we would see, yes, this bug appears to be a very, very old bug. It's somewhat unique in how old that bug is. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so, and, and, but back to our diagram, this thing, one change here. And then if we do 2.322, there may have been two changes that were merged from there back. And those then appear in the in that backports section because mm -hmm. they happened after the weekly baseline. Mm -hmm. right. Sorry, this kind of conversation mm -hmm. at eleven thirty at night must be almost impossible. I'm sorry to do this to you. Mm -hmm. Is this helping you? Is it? Are you are you envisioning it? Definitely, I am loving it because without this, I would that be a bit more difficult. But this makes it easier for me. Great. Okay. So thanks for that. And uh, you use this term weekly baseline. So it is a week, it is a weekly release that we decide that okay. So this is the weekly release on which we'll be basing our uh, LTS release, right? In yes. this case, it is two point three one nine. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Yes, that is correct. Hmm. Okay, so this 2.319 and we are backporting some changes from the on 2.320 and onwards weekly releases. Some of those fixes the changes which are uh, entries which are mentioned in the weekly baseline. And uh, and uh, so that will be in the first section of our release. And on the second section, the notable changes, it will have all the uh, cherry picked selected entries from the previous uh, LTS releases, uh, weekly change log till my current uh, weekly change log, right? Yes. That's hmm. exactly right. Yes. Hmm. That makes sense. So the, hmm. the, just to say exactly what you just said, because you said it beautifully, it was this, whoops, where is it? This, where? Yes. Okay. So hmm. this, this section right here is the curated or human selected Mm -hmm. changes that we've decided to highlight since the prior LTS. Mm, right, right. And so just as you said, now you use, you use the phrase cherry pick. I'm used to using that phrase only to refer to git commits. And this, uh, this is done by a human being to rather than by right. using, using git cherry pick. But, but the same concept still applies. It, this is a human cho chosen set of, oh, here are the things that are valuable to users and we should mention. Right. That makes total sense to me now. Great, excellent, good question. Any, any other questions on the selection process? Mm, yes, so now that I know, how, what the concept is and how do we decide uh, things, uh, not decide exactly. So I wanted to know, how would you decide which uh, notable changes would you pick from the previous weekly change logs? And, and the way I did it was systematically, mm -hmm. I 
to, I bring in all the weekly change logs into a file that are relevant. Mm -hmm. So I bring in, I brought in 304, 305, 306, 317, 318, all of them, brought them into a file. Mm -hmm. And then I began deleting lines or deleting sections for the things that I thought, oh, that's not relevant to a user. That's not relevant to a user. So I created the subset by doing a copy everything in, delete things mm -hmm. that I thought didn't matter. And then mm -hmm. I did a grouping exercise to collect things that I thought were related to each other near mm -hmm. each other. That's why you see modernize the Jenkins manage screen and the Jenkins mm -hmm. build history and appearance of the feed bar and layout. If you look at their- You are in there. Right, exactly. And if you look at their pull mm -hmm. request numbers, their numbers are quite different. 5507, 5664, mm -hmm. 5692. So, so these were not immediately adjacent pull requests, but they were, I thought, related to each other as a theme. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you also mark their uh, priority of the the severity some label right that is why the first one is uh, its bullet is biggest as compared to oh oh yeah. good good point yeah so this one this one was what's called a major request for enhancement a major rfe yeah, exactly. whereas mm -hmm. this one is just an rfe yeah good mm -hmm. point the larger bullet is because this is major and the others mm -hmm. were not declared major right so uh, the change log style guideline does it apply here as well? Like if we, if you selected a developer one for some reason, would you still place it at the end? Yes, as you see here, this is a developer one. The mm. Woodstock implementation Woodstock's implementation was removed, and mm. it it's not detected by users unless mm -hmm. they have one of these critical plugins. This internal. Mm -hmm was put at the end because it offers something that users might want, but it's entirely experimental. Hmm. Right. That makes sense now. And uh, one last question on this is, uh, why do we do this? <laughs> A bit general question. And how does it help the users? Uh, and what users are we talking about? Okay, so why do we do the subsetting? Is that is that your question? Why not just show them everything? Uh, no, no. Why do we do monthly uh, this? Uh, why do we do LTS releases? Oh, oh, I see. Okay, so LTS releases are for users like me who aren't ready to mm -hmm. accept the risks that come with a weekly release, because weekly releases may may surprise me with things that are broken. LTS releases mm -hmm. have the benefit that they've had additional testing time and additional mm -hmm. evaluation time before they're delivered. So as an example, 2.319 was selected as the baseline mm -hmm. and went through about four weeks of evaluation of any bugs in it before it was actually delivered as 2.319.1, the LTS. So it had effectively four weeks of community validation of the weekly release before it was delivered as an LTS. Mm, right. That makes sense. Because in weekly, as you said, it has more risk because uh, they can be some uh, things. Uh, but in LTS uh, release, there are fixes to those uh, issues uh, in the form of backports does that connect there? it does yes that's correct mm. okay so that's why so it's like a more secure option for users to switch to or upgrade their jenkins right it is it is it is it's called long-term support because it's intended to be more stable than the weekly mm -hmm. release and so the the lts the long-term support release gets extra testing before we deliver it and then lasts longer as a as a, a stream of release so it's mm. we stay on the same baseline for three months mm. exactly 
and uh, one last question again about uh, that meme that uh, Gavin shared. So there, there was a big jump from a pre very old uh, uh, LTS release to a new one. So how is that a problem for him or her? Ah, yes, yeah. So and and that story is even a little more glaring because what happened was it was an a jump from a long ago weekly release to a current LTS. Mm -hmm. So the user had chosen a particular Jenkins weekly 1.625 or something. And mm -hmm. 1.625 was released six years ago. The <laughs> Jenkins project does active development on the current release and fixes security bugs in the current release for weekly. It does not do anything on older versions. So right. that user is six years out, was six years out of date for security fixes and mm -hmm. all sorts and plugin updates, all sorts of things that that's a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. And so the, mm -hmm. what's, what's challenging now is that means the user really, if they want to be thorough, they need to read the mm -hmm. upgrade guides since 1.625, which means if we look at this page, okay, I'm mm -hmm. still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling. Okay, there is an LTS version in the change log for them. But if we look back, let's go see where the net last one, uh, recent, the most recent 600 series was. And 609.1, 2015, six years ago. If we go to the next one, it's still 2015. Again, still six years ago. Now, maybe it's, oh, 625. Okay, there you go. It's December of six years ago. Mm, wow. So I do have a question on, around this, but that is because I have, I don't have much knowledge of Jenkins, but why do we need to read everything? Why can't he just directly upgraded to the latest version and just oh, hoping. And, and many people do exactly that. What I, mm -hmm. what I was trying to indicate was if you want to be very thorough in your upgrade, you need to know mm -hmm. what changed between your starting point and today. Mm -hmm. And in order to know what changed between your starting point and today, you have to look at this pages and pages and pages of changes. Mm -hmm. And then you need to make a decision. Is that change relevant to me? Now, you, you described exactly what most users do. Most users say, mm -hmm. I don't care what the changes are. I'm going to try it. And if it works, I'm going to be happy. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to be sad. Mm -hmm. so, so you said uh, you need to read through them in, a, in order to be thorough with the changes, right? Right. So that is just for the benefit of the user so that they know what all happened between this period. But uh, but if, it, if they just directly change it to the latest version, it won't, in a best case, break their system, right? We hope. We hope that it works okay. just great. We really hope that. But considering the number of major changes made mm -hmm. just in the last 12 months to Jenkins, I would mm -hmm. expect all sorts of surprises on a six-year upgrade. Mm -hmm. So it's, it should, it's like a good practice, like to know the changes that happened, right? It is, yes. It's a very good practice mm -hmm. to read what changed and think about them before you do the upgrade. As an example, this one, if you haven't thought about it, may surprise mm -hmm. you significantly. Wow, you changed. The thing that used to be called master <laughs> is now called built-in. How does that affect uh, me? What does that damage? Hmm. So if I would not have read that, I would be surprised with this term called controller, right? Exactly. Right. Hmm. The, the, okay. the shock. Oh, dear. What do you mean? <laughs> you changed this. Well, the reason we write an upgrade guide is so that people and the hmm. change log is so people know we changed this. Hmm. It makes 100% sense to me now. Great. Anything else on upgrade guide assembly? No, just uh, when will we will we be having the next one? Three months will, from now, right? 
so the next LTS will be approximately four to five weeks from now. So we release a new LTS version every four weeks. Every three months, we release a new baseline. So the next LTS will be 2.319.2, then 2.319.3. And after mm -hmm. those three month period, then we'll switch to a new baseline, 2.330 something probably. Hmm. Okay, so there's like level weekly, uh, the lowest one, and then we have this release, and then we have LTS. Well, right no, so we have we have weekly, and mm -hmm. LTS, and mm -hmm. weekly weekly increments by one every week, mm -hmm. right? So here's here's a diagram that may help. So week weekly increments by one every week, right? And over a 12 week cycle, mm -hmm. I wonder why it shows the number as 24. Oh, right. Over a 12 week quarter, mm -hmm. we released the old version 2.303.3. Two weeks later, we released mm -hmm. the release candidate of the new version 2.319.1. Four right. weeks later, we released the dot one. So that was just yesterday. Yes. Two weeks after exactly. that, we'll do a release candidate of dot two. So 2.319.2's release candidate will happen about the 15th of December. Hmm. And then the, okay. the release based on current schedule would happen the 29th of December. Now, 29 December for many people in the Jenkins project is right in the middle of our end of year holidays. And so we'll mm. probably shift it one week later. Mm. But, but okay. the, the pattern generally applies. Then two weeks later, mm. we prepare the release candidate for 319.3 and mm. we choose the baseline for the next version. So See, we're at 23, so 25, 27, 29, 31. So probably 2.332 or 2.333 will be chosen here as the baseline for the next release, which will happen here. Hmm. Makes sense. Right. So since most of our time will be spent on this and i wanted to ask another question around this uh, we just worked on this uh, x point x dot one yesterday right yes so uh if i want to help you on x dot two release cycle release candidate mm -hmm. uh which how, how should i be which weekly change log should i be monitoring that. Yeah, yeah. So the Jenkins developer list will announce X.2 mm -hmm. release candidate. And it will, in the announcement to it, it will say, someone will, will say, I am willing to be the release lead. And they will propose which things should be backported to it. And those backports actually are marked in the Jenkins JIRA system. I'm going to move this off screen just temporarily, just a minute while I go mm -hmm. to find this on JIRA. There's some sensitive things in my JIRA that I have to be sure we, we don't show. Okay, so now it, let's see. So we are looking for issues, LTS candidates. Here we go, yes. All right, so I just did a query that asked for show me all the bugs that are labeled as candidates for the long-term support release. Right now we have just one, this bug, mm -hmm. And it's been labeled LTS candidate here. Hmm. Okay. So this one is to be considered and it was chosen intentionally not to include it at 2.319.1. So this 2.319.1 dash rejected says we chose not to include it. It was too new to include it in 319.1. So hmm. we will wait four weeks and then include it in dot two most likely giving it more time to be tested, more time to be verified mm -hmm. that it's it's good and okay for LTS. Hmm. So 
who labeled this the the person who got asked to work on it right right so vincent latomba mm -hmm. submitted it and said i think this is worthy of being an lts candidate this is significant mm -hmm. and others may do it as well there have been times where I've labeled a bug as LTS candidate, even though I wasn't the submitter. Hmm. Okay. So you label the candidate, uh, LTS candidate uh, to some bugs and uh, those will be put in the next release. Yeah, then the release lead looks at that list of bugs and says, ah, here is the here are the proposals and they propose a backporting pull request and the backporting pull request looks like this All right that's where it's jenkins github core is that the kathy one it is kathy. yes it's the backporting yes. pull request that kathy chan did yes very good mm -hmm. yes yeah, so i was trying it. to understand that as well didn't get it that time Yeah, so here it is. So this is the backporting pull request from Kathy Chan. Mm -hmm. So these are the LTS candidates that she picked out. That's correct. Hmm. Okay. And then what did you do with all of these candidates? Yeah, let's so let's go look at one and we'll go look at its history. So you can see the transitions that it went through. So we're going to switch and look at this one. Okay, so this is build history is missing a hyperlink. Mm -hmm. If we look down here at its history, what we'll see is I created the issue 1st of November. I updated okay. the description, et cetera, changed the status to open in progress. Daniel Beck, labeled it mm. as an LTS candidate. He said, this is mm. serious enough. It needs to be an LTS candidate. And, or he labeled, no, I labeled it as an LTS candidate. He said, not only is it an LTS candidate, it is also a regression. And he's right, it was. Mm. And he corrected it instead of being a task, it's a bug. Then mm. when it was fixed in weekly, so a pull mm. request submit was submitted. So I marked it as in review then it was fixed when it was merged into into jenkins then it was moved to closed when 2.320 was released so so mm -hmm. this bug is is in weekly between 2.314 and 2.319 and then its fix is merged into 2.320 and the bug is closed mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. at this point in time the bug is closed but still has the label LTS candidate. Kathy finds right. it and says, oh, it's closed and has LTS candidate, therefore it's a candidate. She proposes it, and when she mm -hmm. proposes it, she changes the label to add this fixed label to it to say, this thing is ready and will be fixed in 2.319 stable. Hmm. Right. Makes sense. So the LTS candidates, which are closed or which are fixed, uh, they would be selected. Correct. That's right. In order, we, we generally will not take a change into LTS that hasn't already been used in weekly and we would prefer hmm. has had some time being tested in weekly. Hmm. Right. Okay. So, hmm. so what would be my responsibility next time? If there, there's a release candidate and they have done their work of picking out all the LTS candidate uh, entries and uh, they, have, they have created this pull request that you showed me that uh, Kathy did. Mm -hmm. So what would be my uh, job here? Yeah, job so here? Then, then what you do is you take that that list, so this list of backports, and you mm -hmm. propose a pull request to the LTS change log that includes the, the entries from weekly for each of the things that was included in, in the LTS in this proposed backport. 
Does so that's can, that means. Can you repeat that? Yes. So so there is this bug six seven zero six three was hmm. was detected and big enough we wanted to fix it by backporting. I went and hmm. found the weekly changelog entry for exactly this bug and copied it into the LTS changelog, and you would do the same thing. Hmm. Okay. And now there is actually right. a script that can help with this, but I've found that I can as easily copy the text as I can do anything with a script. Right. Hmm. That makes sense. Okay. Yes. So we're already past one minute. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and, and I confess I'm at a point where I need to actually get a little bit of rest. I'm not nearly as young and vigorous exactly. as you are. I've got a, me, a presentation that I'll be doing. So I'd propose we stop here and call this mm -hmm. good enough. Diraj, thank you for joining. We'll talk yeah, more about the, about the next segment in our Tuesday meeting, is that, if that's okay. That's, that would be really great. And uh, sorry if I bothered you with so many questions. Oh, thank you for the questions. That's exceptional. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Sleep well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.